Tonight on Newsbeat, a community buries another law enforcement officer. Capitol Hill is set for a contentious vote on health care. And the LSU baseball bats remains hot as they head to Florida. All this and more Newsbeat starts now. It's Thursday, March 23rd. I'm Brett Hauser. And I'm Lawrence Bonacquisti. Thanks for joining us. Today, Baton Rouge Sheriff's Deputy Sean Anderson was laid to rest. A visitation was held for Sergeant Anderson at Healing Place Church earlier today. A memorial service immediately followed. Following the service, a processional carrying Anderson's body was taken to the Klein Peter Sheriff's sub um, substation before heading to Pine Grove, Louisiana for a private burial. Anderson was shot and killed Saturday night while questioning a rape suspect on O'Neill Lane. The sergeant was an 11-year veteran of both the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's SWAT team. He leaves behind a wife and two children. Sean Anderson was just 43 years old. The man, the man accused of killing Sergeant Anderson Saturday night died on Tuesday from a gunshot wound sustained at the scene. 30-year-old Brandon Wiley was in critical condition from the time of the shooting until his death. Wiley was being questioned by Sergeant Anderson and another deputy regarding the rape of a 15-year-old girl when the struggle began. Tonight, a Walker police sergeant is out of a job after tying and leaving a noose in the squad room. The officer, who has not been named yet, resigned shortly before a council meeting was set to take place where his future with the department was to be determined. According to the disciplinary letter filed by a fellow officer, the sergeant hung the noose above the booking desk in a spot visible to the public. The officer may face criminal charges for his actions due to a state law that prohibits a noose from being on public property. Walker Police Chief, Chief David Addison plans to fire the officer after the incident, saying he will not tolerate this behavior. A shooting late last night in Crowley has taken the lives of three people and a canine unit dog. The incident occurred in the Lafayette suburb following a, distant, a disturbance between a man and his girlfriend. Officers were called to the scene and were fired at once when they arrived. After shooting and killing his girlfriend, the male suspect was shot and killed by police officers. Another female's body was also found inside the house police were called to during the struggle. An officer was also shot, but is expected to make a full recovery. GOP lawmakers were set to take the first real step to repeal and replace Obamacare today. The vote was canceled when the party could not garner enough support. Now the question is whether or not Speaker Paul Ryan can change his colleagues' minds. CNN's Suzanne, Suzanne Malview has details. Down to the final hours, President Trump trying to unite Republicans behind the American Health Care Act. Really optimistic that we can get there. I mean, there's still a lot of details to work out. After vowing to vote no, the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus now says he could close the deal with the White House. To say that we've got a deal, uh, that wouldn't be accurate. The president and I uh, came to an agreement in, in principle. Conservatives like Meadows want to strip the Obamacare provision of essential health benefits, something they say will lower the cost of premiums. But satisfying these conservatives could mean jeopardizing support for more moderate Republicans. We feel like we're getting really, really close. House Speaker Paul Ryan huddling with moderate Republicans behind closed doors who are angered by some of the proposed changes. A key figure in the moderate pool, Representative Charlie Dent, delivering a blow, declaring he will oppose the plan, saying in a statement, I believe this bill in its current form will lead to the loss of coverage and make insurance unaffordable for too many Americans. The White House, though, remains optimistic. Member by member, we're seeing tremendous support flow in our direction, and the count keeps getting stronger. And in a final effort to sink the bill, billionaire brothers Charles and David Koch pledging millions of dollars to help re-elect Republicans who vote against the bill. GOP representatives have been told that a procedural vote on the bill will still be held tonight and that it is possible a full vote could take place tomorrow. Still ahead tonight, with the Miss LSU pageant just days away, we'll be joined by the current crown holder. We'll have more news beat right after this. This Sunday, contestants will take the stage in the 2017 Miss LSU USA pageant. Before they get all dog dolled up for the big event, we're proud to welcome the current Miss LSU, Hi. Emily Herbert, to the studio. So, Emily, how are you feeling about the competition coming up on uh, this weekend? I'm excited. It's been a fun and long year, but I'm excited to finally pass it on to someone who will get to have as great of an experience as I did. 
That's awesome. So um, I know you've had a great year as Miss LSU. So what are you going to miss most about the title and, you know, getting to represent LSU as a whole? Um, I think just being able to represent LSU on a greater scale at LSU events, like at football games or at, I don't know, Christmas parties, you know, being able to participate in those events as not just a student but also Miss LSU. Um, but I will always hold that in my heart. <laughs> Well, and I know as Miss LSU, you get to compete in Miss Louisiana USA, mm -hmm. so um, what was that experience like? It was fun. To be honest with you, I just wanted to be Miss LSU, and I was proud of that, so it didn't really matter how I did at Miss Louisiana. Um, it was more important to me to represent the university well, so that was always my first priority, and then, you know, whatever happened that weekend was fine with me. And what can the contestant, whoever takes home the crown this weekend, look forward to? What, what would you tell them, you know, to look out, look forward to, or what to do more of, or you know, to be a part of as they continue with their reign? Yeah, I would tell them to, you know, make the time what they want. You're kind of on your own. You do, like, get to do like events that you want. So for me, that meant lots of events around eating disorder awareness, um, lots of events around the Special Olympics because those uh, topics are really important to me. So I would just tell the girls to make it what they want and to talk about things that they're passionate about. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you mentioned those are two topics that are important to you. So what were some of the events that you got to be a part of with regard to those two topics? Yeah, so I got to do the Capital Area Special Olympics Games um, last spring, and then just now I got to do like the statewide tournament and help there and do the opening ceremony. And then I was able to walk in the National Eating Disorder Awareness walk here in Baton Rouge. Um, so just being able to be a part of that. And is there anything else that you'd like to say just, you know, as your last time as Miss LSU? Go Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emily. Well, thanks for joining us today. We're glad to have you here in the studio with us. Thank you. The pageant is this Sunday at 6 p.m. in the Student Union. Um, theater tickets are $15. This week, student government candidates have been in the free speech alley discussing policy with a little bit of pie along the way. Tiger TV's Trey Cuvion was there. And that's all the time we have um, for this blog. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> but yeah, it is. You're right. Uh, we're sorry for the technical difficulties, but um, this week, student government candidates have been in the free speech alley discussing policy with a little bit of pie along the way. Tire TV's Trey Cuvion was there. Well, it's that time of year again for student government. LSU students can expect to see candidates handing out flyers in free speech alley as Monday kicks off active campaigning in the 2017 election. Currently, there are only two students on the ballot running for LSU president and vice president. I had an opportunity to sit down with them and discuss some of their plans. The initiatives that we have are our Safe Rides initiative, where we're hoping to partner with a ride sharing service like Lyft or Uber uh, to promote discounted rides for students at certain times of the night so that they can have fun, but in a safe manner. We're also looking at expanding scan drive access from specifically just the student union to major buildings on campus. Each year, student government candidates run on platforms about issues directly affecting LSU students, like clickers and scantrons. But how are these candidates different? The initiative we have this year is a, our clicker initiative. We're looking to find one clicker that we can implement across campus that will be more inexpensive for students. The general election will be held on March 27th, so don't forget to log on to your Moodle account and vote. For Tiger TV, I'm Emily Dillon. We apologize for the technical difficulties again. Um, everything will be online, and the results for the student government elections will be announced next Wednesday afternoon. Tiger TV will, ha TV will have them for you live. The LSU Visitor Center is set to undergo a major upgrade in the near future. According to sources, the Office of Academic Affairs is partnering with P&T Construction to enhance the overall visitor experience on campus. According to Facility Services, there is around $800 million in deferred maintenance projects across campus. The month of March marks Women's History Month. To celebrate, LSU and the Women's Center have partnered together to host several events to honor women and their impact on this campus. However, the Science Department is honoring their women in a different way. The Science Department came up with the idea of making collectible trading cards that highlight female professors. And Don Jenkins, the Director of Communications for the department, says the cards have been well received. The trading cards grew out of an idea, you know, to promote Women's History Month. So the College of Science 
we have a number of phenomenal women scientists and we just wanted to have a creative way to share the work that these women do with the community. One doctor is taking a different approach to raising money and awareness for immigrants' rights and it may just be music to your ears. Megan Cruz has the story. You might be feeling like Umar Malik recently. You know, is this really the country is just really the society that we want to pass on to our kids. Unhappy with the current state of things here in the U.S. That's why Malik to my future son or daughter penned his letter to the future. Malik is an American citizen. His parents emigrated from Pakistan. He says he feels like our president is teaching hate specifically against Muslims and other foreign born people. Make us out to be like criminals that'll never succeed and so I'm writing to you hoping that you'll never concede because you are made of something beautiful, not something obscene. And with the light inside your eyes, show them what they can't see. Malik hopes if you like his message, you download his song on the website Bandcamp. His artist name is UIM, and he's using it to fundraise for the American Civil Liberties Union. Empowered a lot of minority groups and a lot of the people who feel discouraged in this time period and have really stood up in defense of them. So far, the song has raised close to $600. You're a seed of immigration that was grown into this nation. The ACLU says it'll use this money to support immigrants and Muslim communities here in New Mexico. Megan Cruz, KOET Action 7 News. According to the ACLU, since Donald Trump's Muslim ban was enacted earlier this year, they have seen an enormous increase in online donations. A contagious virus has caused a Hammond school to close for a long weekend. According to this Tangipahoa Parish school system, Hammond Westside Montessori School will close Friday due to the spread of the neurovirus. This virus causes inflammation in the stomach and intestines, causing the stomach pain, nausea, and vomiting. The neurovirus is spread by contaminated food, water, and surfaces. After multiple students at the school developed symptoms, administrators decided a three-day weekend was needed to break the cycle of the virus. When we return, see why this year's strawberry harvest might may be bigger, literally, than usual. Newsweek continues right after this. Well, this week's student government candidates have been in free speech alley discussing policy with a little bit of pie along the way. Tiger TV's Trey Cuvion was there. Here you go. Take a sticker. Take a sticker. Thank you. It's the week before student government spring election. Take a sticker, too. There you go. Elections on Moodle next week, next Monday. Which means lots of stickers and flyers. We're running for st uh, student government president, vice president, and senate, and all down. So this is our ticket. But this year's election cycle is slightly different, as only one major ticket is running for SG's president and vice president seat. Here's some information with our candidates. The Effect Campaign, running unopposed for the top two seats in SG's executive branch, has still made an effort to campaign this week, despite the lack of competition. Would you like to learn some more? Here's some brief information for okay. you. Affects presidential nominee, sophomore Jason Batto, says the campaign has had a different focus leading up to Monday's election. Being the only major ticket has kind of allowed us to gear our message from, hey, vote for us, to, hey, this is what we're doing for you, and this is how you can get involved to help us out. But students, like sophomore Amir Najdi, says the lack of competition in this year's election may be due to a lack of student interest. And maybe it's reflective of how our student government isn't bringing in a lot of interest if not one than one party is participating. In. Bado says he recognizes the disconnect between students and SG and hopes the effect campaign can bridge the gap. You know, sometimes we feel like students feel disconnected from student government and they don't really know what's going on. So it's important for us to try to connect with the student body as a whole. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Trey Cuvion. Results from the student government elections will be announced next Wednesday afternoon. Tiger TV will have them for you live. Back now with politics. The battle over health care is not the only issue causing contention this week. On Monday, FBI Director James Comey was on Capitol Hill to testify before the House Intelligence Committee. During his testimony, Comey said that he had no evidence to prove that the Obama administration wiretapped Trump Tower. In a rare move, he also confirmed that the Bureau was investigating ties between Trump and Russia campaign officials. One of the things we radiate to the world is the importance of our wonderful, often messy, but free and fair democratic system and the elections that undergird it. And so when there's an effort by a foreign nation state to mess with that, to destroy that, to corrupt that, 
It's very, very serious. Threatens what is America. And if any Americans are part of that effort, it's a very serious matter. And so you would expect the FBI to want to understand, is that so? And if so, who did what? The White House announced earlier this week that first daughter Ivanka Trump will be getting an office in the West Wing. The new digs, however, won't come with an official title or salary. Since introducing her father at his campaign launch in June 2016, Ivanka has been a key voice along with her husband, senior advisor Jared Kushner. Confirmation hearings for Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Neil Gorsuch, continue. The appeals judge has been at the Capitol all week, answering questions from the Senate Judiciary Committee on a wide range of issues. Chair Chuck Grassley said his committee will hold a vote on Gorsuch April 3rd. I have admiration for every member of this committee, for the President of the United States, for the Vice President of the United States. But respectfully, none of you speaks for me. I speak for me. I am a judge. I am independent. I make up my own mind. That's all for now. Back to Larissa at the desk. There's no doubt that this winter has been warmer than usual, but there's a benefit to having a hot Christmas. Because of Louisiana's warm weather throughout the winter, local strawberry farms are predicting that this season's strawberries will be bigger, better, and redder. The farmers are even seeing an increase in profit by not having to cover the strawberries for a deep freeze. There are over 80 strawberry farms in the state, making strawberries a major industry in Louisiana. Strawberry farmers everywhere in the state are definitely thanking Mother Nature for the heat this time around. You got your good days, your bad days. You always have your good season, your bad season. So uh, last year was a bad season, but so far this year's a good season. LSU baseball finally got a Wednesday win after struggling for two weeks. We'll show you highlights when we come back. This is head coach Ed Ogeron. You're watching Tiger TV Sports. Welcome back. I'm sports director Max Hawkins. Well, they finally did it. The LSU baseball team got back in the Wednesday and went back in the Wednesday night win column after losing two straight weeks to UNO and McNeese. Tigers beat Southeastern, the team 40 miles to the east, last night, eight to two. A big reason for the win were the LSU bats. You see here Greg Dykeman with a big bomb straight over left field. That was the junior's eighth of the season. The ball was recorded traveling about 368 feet and around 104 miles per hour. Late in the game, Southeastern wanted no more of Dykeman. They intentionally walked him when two runners were in scoring position. Freshman Josh Smith also had a terrific night at the plate. Smith was 4 for 4. One hit was a three-run double late in the seventh inning that just barely got down. Honestly, off the bat, I was like, please get down. And then it ended up being being down. And that's baseball. I mean, he hit a ball hard right at somebody. Like, I want to say Pat smoked the ball to center, and it didn't get didn't get fall, or didn't fall. And then I hit a little bloop double, and it, and it falls. So just sometimes things work your way a little bit. So. Tigers are looking to keep those bat bats hot through the weekend. They left Baton Rouge today, headed to Gainesville for a three-game series, three series against number 11, Florida. Game one of the series airs tonight at 6 p.m. Tomorrow night, excuse me, on the uh, 6 p.m. on the SEC Network. Alex Lang will get the start. We're just under a month out from LSU's annual spring game. Naturally, there's plenty of excitement around campus because, well, football clearly runs the show over here. Now, on to a man who will certainly be putting on a show this fall, Darius Geis. Geis will be the lead feature back in Matt Canada's new offense now that Leonard Fournette is headed to the NFL. There's a lot of hype around the running back, with many even throwing around the word Heisman. But Geis says he's not concerned with that at the moment. How will you handle like, from now until the start of the year as far as the attention you're getting, the Heisman trophy talk, all those different kind of things? How do you think you're going to handle that? Now, I'm just trying to learn this new offense and, and grind and go hard out there with my brothers. That's all I'm worried about right now. Sweet 16 is set to get underway tonight, but for one basketball fan, the tournament, well, it can't get any sweeter. A Berkshire Hathaway employee is $100,000 richer after predicting the first 29 games of this year's tournament correctly. His boss, billionaire Warren Buffett, will have to sign that check as a part of his annual comp competition. The employee's only slip up in the first round came with a 30th game between South Carolina and Marquette. We'll take one final break tonight. Up next, find out what tourist attractions you should visit on your next vacation. 
Have you ever traveled and not known what to visit during your trip? Well, now there is a little help. A United Kingdom travel site is now out with a list of one thing to see in each country according to tourists. Some of the highlights from across the world are Niagara Falls if you're in Canada, Harry Potter Studios in England, and here in America, Central Park. A map of the entire globe with attractions is published on TripAdvisor.com. That's going to do it for us tonight. Be sure to keep up with us on social media and online at LSUNow.com. I'm Larissa Bonacquisti. And I'm Brett Hauser. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend, Tigers.